Climate change could affect nearly every aspect of birds' lives. It could change their habitats. It could make it hard for birds to find food. It could interfere with migration, flying through wildfire smoke, hurricanes, or drought. And so what that means is birds are canaries in the coal mine for climate change. Birds are much more sensitive to a lot of environmental changes. You know, so really by monitoring birds, we may get that early signal that there's something that we need to pay attention to. And when you're interested in a group of animals that are as broadly distributed as birds, you need every set of eyes you can get. And so that's where citizen scientists come in. It's not possible like even remotely, to expect that we can have enough professional biologists to collect detailed observations. They really need people all around the world to volunteer to tell them what they're seeing in their own neighborhoods. So that's why this summer, the New York Times partnered with the Cornell Lab of Ornithology to ask readers to go out into the world, wherever they live, whether or not they had birding experience, to identify and track the birds they saw using an app called eBird, which would log their observations and report them back to the Cornell team. We directed beginners to an app called Merlin, which would walk them through how to identify the birds they were seeing. You know, they're recording information about the species that they saw, the number of those species. They also submit information on the location, the time of day. We wanted people to incorporate birding into their daily lives, take note of what they were seeing at the bus stop or on a park bench or on the way to school drop-off. We don't need to understand birds or the environment only in the national parks or the protected areas. Right? We need to understand what's happening out there in the world everywhere. So eBird data specifically has already been used in a ton of research studies. Scientists are tracking how migration is beginning earlier and how certain birds are expanding northward into cooler territories. There have been other interesting studies that have used eBird data to figure out that cities tend to favor bird populations that are smaller and lay fewer eggs at a time. eBird data allow us to be much more precise with the way conservation is applied out there in the landscape. So an example is in the Central Valley of California. We're able to identify which fields are the most important for waterfowl and water birds and shorebirds as they're migrating through the Pacific Flyway. There are benefits for the scientists themselves who suddenly have access to data they might not otherwise get, but there are sort of broader societal benefits too in helping people become more cognizant of the other species that we share the planet with and how our fates are all intertwined. He just flew into the tree. This birding project taught me about how fragile the ecosystem around birds is. This project motivated me to do more bird counting during the summer than I normally would have. Birds that are uh, alive right now are really struggling because of climate change and litter. So the Times project has wrapped up, but we really hope that people will continue, that they've discovered a new way of looking at the world, that they've discovered new things about their communities, and maybe even found a new sense of community. Hopefully over time, you know, just being out there in the world and watching birds becomes just a, a natural part of their lives.